Hey, Carly. I love. <laughs> All right. So tell me, tell me last year's theme for you. And then we'll get straight into uh, moving forward in this year, uh, what you do, who you are, where you live, et cetera. But what was, was last year's theme for you? Slowness, nothing. Yeah. Moving as slowly as possible. I've, I did the least I've ever done in my life last Mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Yeah. And because physical, emotional, all of it, right? All of it. Everything was a complete rewiring of my system to what it is to not live in the rat race. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that being said, tell everybody where you live and sort of how your life is set up for that. And then also what you do and how you assist women. Uh, So I live in uh, the interior of British Columbia, Canada. And I live in a tiny home in the, in the trees, in the forest. And yeah, well, la- the majority of last year, I lived in a fucking 1990s camper, 26 foot camper. And, and uh, <laughs> it was a, uh, it was a huge learning curve, learning mm-hmm. how to moving out of a, a large city in Canada out of a beautiful home into a fucking yeah old piece of shit camper in the middle of the bush pretty much with me and my two dogs and it's it's been like my probably one of the scariest moves that I've done stepping out of the rat race and being like okay humans are not meant to work Monday to Friday nine to five we're meant to walk in the forest every single day and watch the river flow and eat food have time to fucking cook food that kind of thing so yeah that is my life my life is cooking and walking and watching the sunrise and sunset and spending time with my horse now and what it is that I do I am a I don't even really know how to say what it is that I do. I don't, I hate all the Mm -hmm. labels and all that jazz, but I specialize in the female pelvis. I do hands-on hands-in pelvic work with women and I support women from essentially womb to tomb through bleeding, pregnancy, postpartum, menopause, you name it. The pelvis is my, my whole world. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I saw when I first found you was womb to tomb and doing this work and diving into myself and just how I feel about the womb and plants and death. I was like, this is my person. I know it is. (laughs) And then I got, I think I got hooked from there. Um, Yeah. Female body literacy. That's one of the things you have put on there. And I really like that a lot. Um, the physiology for me, the knowledge and wisdom that you have with that, you know, I send so many people to you and I'm like, we're going to work together and I'm going to help you do X, Y, and Z. Then you need to go do nectar. You know, you need to go on there and you need to do that. You need to understand these things because, you know, I worked in allopathic medicine for over a decade in many different departments. I met many different physicians, not all, you know, are nefarious with intent, but none with the type of knowledge that you have and expertise. So yeah, it's, it's really mind blowing to me how many doctors, midwives, nurses have come to Nectar. And like, I've had midwives that have been midwives for 20 years. And they're like, I had no idea the depth of anatomy until I came to Nectar. And I'm like, fuck, it's mm-hmm. crazy. People know nothing about their bodies and it is, it is extremely hard to find correct information about the female body. Yeah, absolutely. So the other reason why I came to you, um, and LinkedIn, I think it was a story of your mom Mm. and being there for your mom during her transition. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what 
for me and the work I do and speaking on the matriarchy and going back and our mother and her mother and, and the womb and what we've, we've held in there, and what we've stored. So I know that that was a really hard time in your life. How did that really catapult you into the work you do now? Well, I wouldn't say my mom's death catapulted me. I would say who my mom was as a person when she was alive is what catapulted me into this work because I was doing this work before she got sick, Mm -hmm. before she died. Yeah. Um, But my mom, like my mom lived a, a hard life. She lived on the streets when she was like eight years old, eight, 10 mm-hmm. years old, she was on the streets and she was a prostitute until she was in her early twenties and a drug addict and, and, you know, that, that lifestyle. And she just the path that she took in her life and being a prostitute and then having children and raising me and being a very sexually open person and um, like, promoting in the household a healthy sexual relationship with our bodies like there was no shame everything was an open book Mm -hmm. um she really laid the the foundation for me to step in to do this work yeah yeah and then walking with her through her death just I guess deepened what it is that I do because I've been with women giving birth and it's birth and death are the exact same thing. There's no difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, That's how I feel about, well, those two things. And then later I definitely feel the call to stay with people in death. Uh, But it's very much how we can view, I feel plants, you know, and we both experienced that. And we know that, you know, I've come to this place too, where it's like the sacredness of them, but it's no more sacred than we are. You know, it's like, I refuse anymore to believe or even entertain this whole hierarchy of this whole ritualistic sacredness of it. It's like, I am nor above anything nor below it. Yeah. I say this all the time in Nectar. Your pussy is so fucking sacred and it's no different than your hand. Yeah, right. I know. I just, it's all body. Right. It's, uh, you know, the plant and, and just the different variations of what it is that we see sacred, whether it's, it's that, or it's dog shit. It's all fucking sacred. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I think for the last year for me and coming into this uh, reclamation with myself and what is spirituality to me, like what is ritual to me, you know, Mm. because I've been so anti-dogmatic, like Anything that starts to feel like even somewhat of a routine, a fad, new age shit, I reject. I don't even want to hear it. I don't want to talk about it. And um, I just see those different themes in many different cultures, but it's it sort of has this overtone of know that it's sacred. I'm like, you can't just say that it's sacred and, and mean, you know, that it's okay to be this dogmatic. Like, absolutely not. So in your work, and I know in my work too, there are things that I, I feel very strong about, right? Yes. What do you feel for you is the strongest view that you get the most pushback from, from people? Oh. <clears throat> I don't know if I could just pick one thing. There's also talk, there's, <laughs> I have. I have a few topics that I have like refrained myself from speaking on mm-hmm. um, because I don't want the pushback. I just don't want to deal with it. Like I totally disagree with IVF and all fertility treatments. Um, I definitely get pushback when I speak out on um, the transgender movement. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what I get, well, connected to the transgender movement one of the biggest topics that I get pushed back on is I completely disagree with hysterectomies I believe women should put in the work to heal their womb and keep their organs their whole fucking life not just go for the easy choice and cut it out yeah 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 those are the same very heated topic 
Um, mm-hmm. and it's a, a hard pill to swallow for a lot of women. Yeah. Yeah. And I watched, you know, the ego puts up a big fight, you know, oh, huge. it puts up a huge fight and, um, it's just that deconstructing from the medical institutions that takes time for us to wrap our head around it yeah. because of just the godly pedestal that they've been put on and they don't know everything. You know, they, they actually know a lot less than they say that they do even. And the textbooks are very outdated and the way they teach is very outdated. The, we know that now the lack of nutrients that's taught in medical, medical school, but even the lack of actually knowing the brain, because you can't study someone's brain that's alive. So it's like totally very little of the brain is even known and studied. Yeah. I don't think like we understand a drop in the bucket of yeah. the human body and we understand like a fucking a quarter of a drop in the bucket of the female body. The female Absolutely. body is extremely complicated compared to the male body. And I don't know if we will ever truly understand the female form because studying alive bodies has ethical issues and studying pregnant body women pregnant women has even more ethical issues you know so and there's also this layer that the feminine will always hold of mystery we're not meant to understand everything we're meant to just trust absolutely and honor our cyclical rhythm right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah all those topics you just named um yeah really resonant with all of those. Uh, but for me, it's, it's the birth control, you know, it's like oral contraceptive IUDs. Uh, and it's the lack of information that women know they, you know, it doesn't take very long to do very short amount of research to know the types of synthetic hormones. Um, but it just hasn't been long enough yet, but even the history of it, the creators, when it began, who's backing it up, and who now is in control. So you can Absolutely. go back and follow the money. Yeah. And it's wild that I literally can sit down and spend one hour of my life and that's it going back into that, yeah. you know? So doing the work that you've been doing for so long and uh continuing of course we continue our education we go to mentors we learn more it's constant we're never ending what's something that i mean there's probably many but what are some things that have really blown your mind that you once thought and then learned in a whole different way about the female body from the very beginning is there a certain belief that you had or something you thought the way it was and then you came across a new form or perspective? I would say the biggest thing that's up for me right now is learning about the female prostate. Uh, We've always been told that women do not have a prostate, Mm -hmm. that only men have a prostate. And like, this is, this belief is perpetuated across the board. And um, like, even in, I'm in this biodynamic craniosacral training currently, and I've heard teachers and students say that the female uterus and the male prostate are kin, just like the ovaries and the testes are kin, you know, that that embryologically they come from the same tissue. And that's a load of fucking horseshit. Mm -hmm. Women have a prostate, men have a prostate, and women have a uterus that men do not have anything that compares to it. Mm -hmm. you know and so the female prostate is one of the biggest things that is up for me that from all the anatomy and experience that I've learned over the years it's always just been referred to as the g-spot it's just this spot but it's it's a gland it's an organ and it's so been so downplayed and you can even put in a google search and is female ejaculate real And it'll be like, no, it's just urine. And that is horseshit. Mm -hmm. And it's just another layer of this conditioning to keep women disconnected from the power that they hold in their bodies. 
female ejaculate is one of the most nourishing substances created in the body, period. And the amount of women that get to experience that healing substance is few and far between because they don't even believe that it's real. They believe like if you can ejaculate, it's just a party trick, just Mm -hmm. a boring trick, you know, and it's fucking bullshit. So I see this whole like phase in our evolution, right, of the suppression of what our bodies are capable to do, uh, the feminine body, the woman's body. And how it was feared, you know, really, because we have a lot of power. We have a lot of control in that way. We can use it. We can manipulate with it. But there was this whole, I mean, hundreds of years, and especially in the Western culture. Now, the suppression of we didn't even know how our body works. We don't even know the phases. Yeah. Women wouldn't even know when they're, they were going to start their period. They didn't have a clue what ovulation was. The follicular. No, they got pregnant. No idea. So that was this, that phase. Now you have technology that's come online. It's part of the age of Aquarius. Aquarius is technology, AI, technological advancements. And then we learn more through that. There's more, there's better YouTube videos than probably some universities right now and some professors teaching about certain things. Absolutely. So you, you can't really tell me at this point for me, there's no excuses because the technology, you know, more people have a phone than they have three meals a day, you know, they're, they have a phone um, and there's free Wi-Fi, but there was this whole, this whole time span of not knowing that. Now we're starting to learn it from technology. People are talking about on social media. It's become this thing, womb healing, womb work. It's starting to become words now that people hear a lot. I think the next phase is female ejaculation. Like you said, it's not just a party trick. This is another thing that's been suppressed. So we like go in these like evolutionary cycles where it's like, oh yeah, there's these phases we have and the sinking with the astrologicals and the moon. And, and then now it's like this whole other turning of the tide, right? Absolutely. And there's, and I, there's, there's also layers to the female ejaculation piece, like the way that it's viewed in and experience for the majority of women is this hard, rough, a man has to force something to happen to your body. Right. And that is like the distorted view of it, you know, the distorted approach to it. And um, yeah, there's just, and then there's cervical ejaculation yeah. as well, <laughs> which is right. a whole other fucking level. Yeah. And for me, that's, this has been my progression as well and learning that through my body. And it's something that I'm currently working on. It doesn't come easy for me. I started out my sexual experience being extremely blocked off Mm -hmm. and uh, beginning like losing my virginity to someone I did not trust. My body has been closed since 15 in that way, even though I'm very sexually liberated, I'm a very sexual person, but it takes a lot for me to mentally go into that space and align. Like it's a deep, deep meditation for me. And that is partly to do because of my relationships and not being able to surrender. So that being said, going into um, relationships externally in the outer world of people we don't really know. And then internally, like in our inner gardens, right? Mm -hmm. Of like delicately selecting who's in our garden and then who we're having sex with. And who is touching our body? That has taken me so long, but it's so wild because energetically, I've always personally known that without knowing it. I've always been very monogamous and very, to a degree, selective. Still not because I would stay in the same relationships. When you work with a woman, how does that show up for you? And seeing this pattern that we've had of choosing these people, especially to be sexual with, that I, you know, we can go as far as saying it like adds toxicity to our life and perpetuates the ongoing discomfort. How have you seen that show up in women's bodies when you've worked on them hands on? Every time we have sex or are intimate 
even if it's not sex with someone that we truly don't want to be or anytime we are penetrated that we are not a full fucking yes to being penetrated it creates an energetic rupture with our body which accumulates into tension and adhesion and inflammation in vulva vaginal womb pelvic tissue which leads to fibroids endometriosis Mm -hmm. pcos hormonal imbalance painful periods infertility you fucking name it it's all connected Mm -hmm. then it just accumulates every single time we make those decisions it's another layer and we don't deal with it and it builds and it gets grows and it it manifests from energetic into these physical symptoms that we are experiencing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely true for myself. And then hip flexors. So much of what has been stored and then noticing that in other women too, and that sexual trauma in there and the lack of flexibility, the lack of mobility, the lack of movement. And, um, very much so for me and like mirroring that with my mother and her mother and sort of this like this place I'm in where I'm not going to continue that I'm not going to continue sabotaging myself and being with someone just for safety or security or comfort or just knowing and moving from that so yeah I I noticed that too and uh, you know working with women and and the weight we carry there the weight we carry and the thighs and the legs and the fortressing of our body. <clears throat> yeah. And at some point we can talk about what we were just talking about before this, which was the instant gratification piece. But this idea that, you know, we can still say, stay, stay in certain situations and work on ourselves in the same way. And what I've always used to tell women is to follow how animals do this, Right not only giving birth, but they migrate, right? So there's gazelle in Africa and they lack water and they lack food in a certain area. And so they migrate. And in that migration, some will die, some will get left behind. They have to let go of that area they were familiar with, right? And they have to move forward. And you always see on like the Discovery Channel them having to go over at least one body of water eventually with crocodiles in it. Yeah, and it's like they all get up to the edge and eventually like they wait there forever. They're just like, ah, you know, finally one jumps and pushes through and then all the rest come through. And they don't endure. Nature doesn't endure. It would rather die and decay than endure. Yeah. But we do. And it's like those hits of dopamine and that instant gratification from go the obsession of going to certain healers or going to seminars or going to retreats. It's like wanting that instant thing. Then you're going straight back to the environment with the toxicity. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just not going to change your life. Nothing is going to fucking happen. Nothing is going to change. Yeah. And um, that's for me, that's where I'm like really like, pretty harsh and hard on that I don't because of even my own life experience it doesn't I'm not going to change my mind about this anytime soon you know because totally. in relationship in partnership too and whatever they're not doing in their own evolution or with their body like you're saying you know we're taking that on in our field in our physiology and it's storing in there yeah you know um that's definitely my journey as well and having to unwind from that. What about you? All our fucking journeys. Like I yeah. have abused the fuck out of my body. Yeah. With toxic sex, toxic relationships, trauma bonding, being a drug addict, being an alcoholic, eating the worst fucking food possible for me, starving myself for years, being so orthorexic for years like the layers of abuse just fucking piled the fuck on until I decided enough is enough Mm -hmm. right right and yeah it's it takes a lot of fucking guts to step out of what we view as 
normal life of working Monday to Friday, nine to five, going home at night, having your fucking glass of wine every single day, because that's what you need to relax from your day. It's that is not how humans are meant to fucking live. And healing will never happen ever in that paradigm period. I agree. Yeah. What was your big jump off? What was your big catalyst moment? There's, there's a ton, but what's one that comes up that helps you have the guts? My biggest moment that I would say probably the biggest moment was in 2000 and I think it was 2018, 2019. The years get, get all mixed up for me now, but my brother was in this involved in a hockey team where there was a bus bus accident and like I think 16 kids 16 people in total died and I was I supported my brother through that whole journey and it was it was an extremely traumatic experience and at the time I was my practice my hands-on practice in the city that I was living in I'd been doing my body work practice for like 14, 15 years at this point, probably 14 years. Um, And I was the busiest I'd ever been. I was working, doing body work, fucking 10 hours a day, five, six days a week. I was booked out months in advance. And I was like, I'm fucking set. I'm golden. I'm making the most money I've ever fucking made. I own a brand new house. I own a rental property. Life is great. This is everything I need. And, and, I, but I was busting my balls. I was working like a fucking dog um, to have everything that I had. And then I, I went through this experience with my brother and this, all these people dying. And I went into the first depression I've ever experienced in my life. I've never been depressed before, never had suicidal ideation, anything like that. And it was, completely uncontrollable like all I would think about for weeks all day was killing myself and I just couldn't it was the only thing that brought my body any sense of peace was visualizing cutting my wrists and going into a hot bath and uh I was like I can't I can't keep doing this like I'm working I was I was single at the point at that time I had I had been in a nine year relationship and it ended like a month before this bus accident happened. And it was a very unhealthy relationship, total trauma bond, toxic, very toxic um, relationship. And it was, the relationship ended in March, the bus accident was in April. And in November, I was, October, November was when all the suicidal ideation and everything started happening. And uh, in January, I woke up one morning and I was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. It's either I fucking kill myself or I make a change. Those were the options. There was no other choice for me. And I called a realtor I list both my houses my brand new house my rental property listed them and yeah told my parents I was like I'm moving and I'm closing my practice and I'm going to move to a different city and restart everything Mm -hmm. and yeah that was like that was that was the like bottom of the barrel point yeah that was like what are you prioritizing? Are you going to keep feeding the beast and working yourself to death and doing life completely alone? And for what? For fucking nothing. Or are you going to prioritize what your heart really desires and follow that voice? Yeah. Because that, that voice, listening to that voice is what has gotten me to where I am today. When I quit doing drugs, hard drugs, it was that voice that I listened to that like, I had no idea that I'd be doing the work that I am doing right now, but it is the voice that was like, drop these little breadcrumbs Mm -hmm. and I just listen to it and I follow it. And it's like, okay, where the fuck are we going next? Just follow. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be really powerful for a lot of women to hear, you know? 
or individuals just in general. And yeah. and like, it's fucking scary. It's scary yeah. to sell $750,000 worth of houses and lose money and close a practice where you're booked out months in advance and you have guaranteed income. And it's just like, is your dreams and your, your heart's desire worth worth it to you? Right. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's like the rewriting for me in the last couple of years of the word sacrifice, because you have to ask yourself what you're going to sacrifice. And yep. that word's really been hijacked by religion, but you have to sacrifice something for something else. And it doesn't mean that it's always going to be uncomfortable. Some things aren't, but most of the time it will be. Absolutely. And in astrology, you know, that's where we look at the polarities. That's where we look at our squares and opposition, but the only way is through. And it's like on, in your chart, when you look at Pluto, you look directly across the chart of what Pluto faces and that's your way through, right? So like both of ours is Pluto Scorpio and the direct through is Taurus. That's creating our own sustainable, income values grounding that's getting in touch with our body that's learning our body that's mapping it yeah the vessel that's going to carry us or start disintegrating way too early because we've been creating void fillers we've been putting shit in it and and you know the paradox for me always is i do believe that that individual's physiology due to the way they see this reality can shift. Some people can eat certain things, not have a belief system that's really heightened towards that. But at the end of the day, an accumulation of a lot of one thing that is not good, it just is going to add up. It's going to mound up. It, to me, it's like having a dresser and repainting it over and over and over again you know, and just the layer and layer and stacks of it. And in just the masking of the fact that it's like breaking down and like pieces of the wood need to be fixed and like removed and added to. Um, so yeah, when it comes to when you wake up every day for you now and, and these pulls that you've had of being guided in that way, What's one thing you think about when you wake up that you know, at this moment at least, but that you can see yourself doing every single day until you die? The hands-on hands in public work that I do. Yeah. Especially like I, I, I've been a manual therapist for 17 years and I haven't done, I've had my practice closed now for, it'll be a year. <laughs> I think, yeah, a year in March that I have not been doing really any body work. And I've just started getting back into it now, now that I, I have the space for it, um, the physical space for it, living mm -hmm. in the camper, I didn't have the physical space for it. And like, it is just, it's, it is an art form that my body just loves and just knows it's second nature I don't have to think about it and the changes that happen in those sessions is just fucking unbelievable and it is like my one rolfing teacher he died at like 90 something years old and he rolfed until he died he'd do mm -hmm. one session a day and that's my plan mm -hmm. I love it yeah, yeah. Being one-on-one -on -one with someone and hands-on, is there a, a moment in time of one of the most like monumental experiences that you had between an individual and yourself that was just like something that you'll never forget? I've had multiple sessions, giving and receiving, <clears throat> where it's just like both of us have been transformed. Mm -hmm. Both step back in time and into the red tent days and you know there's this cellular remembrance that's happened in those sessions and yeah because I've I've done thousands and thousands 
like I have well over 16,000 hours of body work of giving body work Mm -hmm. and yeah there isn't just one there's hundreds of sessions that yeah do you feel like now um and have you always felt sort of like beyond the physiology that energetic undercurrent where you you've always known that it's not just physiology there's an energetic expansion exchange accumulation storage that's happening between you and the individual but also what they've accumulated in their body and also I've always thought too when when I meet someone in person or if I work with them not even in person but that we designed it for that time you know it's like if we were to make this decision and these other million decisions and we would lead here that we would assist each other yeah just curious if you ever feel that way when you are working with someone hands-on, like you're in that now moment. It's like all that exists, which you're like, ah, everything led to this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've had, especially when I have like the more complicated sessions of like women have had wild fucking surgeries happen to them. Mm. And like, I've had some people walk in and lay down on my table and it's just been like it's it's heartbreaking what women's bodies have been through and what the medical system the amount of medical trauma and abuse that has happened is fucking it's it's terrifying and heartbreaking and there's not a lot of practitioners that have the guts to go deep with people and to meet people it down in the dark in the deep and like take risks because when you have your hands in someone's in someone's pelvis or in someone's mouth and you're <clears throat> like going into tissues and meeting them in the depths of these traumas you're taking risk and there's not a lot of people that are willing to take those risks and I know like people that want to go there they show up on my door mm-hmm. you know it's not just by coincidence yeah that's for sure like I'm I'm willing to fucking go anywhere anyone wants to go in the the deep caverns of their body same yeah I feel like I mean that's I don't work with newbies anymore I always tell them to go to other individuals who do and I don't want to say it's because I I have a lot of patience but there's um there's this recognition of the different phases we're in in life. And I respect when someone's in one and they have to be there. And and so I know my role, right? Like that's not my role to, to help you newly awakening and this and that, but there are other people who do that at the same time. Also too, I'm not going to walk on eggshells and I'm not going to tiptoe. And so it's like after a little bit for working together, It is my job and my role and the exchange of energy and monetary. It's like, you want that anyways, right? So it's like, we want people to do that for us and push us to our edge. Yeah. But we've got to, we've got to hold each other accountable. You know, if you really want those changes that you say that you do, and you're not a newbie here and you're still with that partner, are you still in that job that is literally affecting your health? Yeah. And you do not have people by you that are your friends or that you've paid to do work that say, you got to leave that person. You got to make these changes. You got to leave that job. You got to step away in whatever capacity that looks like, you know, that's a risk in itself because it's like, I'm never going to tell people what to do and how to live, but when they given me permission yeah, to open my mouth and be a part of their journey, I'm not going to hold back. Exactly. Yeah. And you wouldn't want that, right? No. So then I noticed the different level because I decided that within myself, the different level and caliber of women coming forward that are like, I'm terrified, I'm scared, but I'm ready. I'm like, good. I would be more worried if you weren't fucking terrified and scared. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck, yeah. Like, here we exactly. are. Exactly. So I can do it. Yeah. Do you feel like during the pandemic that 
you saw a fluctuation in people coming forward and being like, I'm fucking terrified, but I'm ready. I'm done with this shit. I'm moving. Or was it about the same? Or how did you feel about that? You know, it was, it was interesting during the, during the pandemic, the city I was living in um, w- had one of the harshest lockdowns and stuff like that. So like I, I was scared during the pandemic of like losing my business and like being fined if I didn't follow the rules and things like that. Um, so I definitely saw a, a mix of it, of people who are like, we're following the rules, we're crossing our T's, dotting our I's, doing all that. But then the, the more I grew the fucking balls to speak out on my views of the pandemic and you know my disdain and uh, total complete non-trust of the government the more that those people that were like you know on the same page as me started to show up and all that but it was yeah it was a very interesting experience living in a city where it was like if you don't fucking follow the rules your neighbor's gonna call and rat on you (laughs) it's fucking nuts that's wild yeah yeah I mean you're seeing that all over the world and and I think that that was a part of um kind of a a plan you know totally it's it's what's gonna happen to some people from the fear yeah I'm so grateful for the for the whole fuckery of of it all because it really forced me to speak out and find like an even deeper layer of my voice I never fucking imagined I'd be speaking out on vaccines I don't have kids you know I never imagined I'd be speaking out on like talking on politics and the government and shit like that and it was just like there was just something in me through the whole experience where I couldn't I couldn't not stop talking I just had to let that thing fucking rip and it was the best best thing ever (laughs) yeah 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 and that too, uh, speaking on that, once we find it, finally drop like this like third wall and we tap into that wound, right? So in astrology, we look at like Chiron, for example, you and I both have Chiron and Gemini. When we finally activate that over time. It's like we fine tune it and it's like the diamond, right? It's like being yeah. roughed out. And then we finally found that, av- find the avenue of the, passion that we feel like the fuel right so it's this direction oh womb women's bodies women's health women's sexuality okay now we find this foundation then it's like the fuel that pushes it and the wildfire that's created from it that is a part of our healing so as we're doing it we are literally healing ourselves yeah and then it becomes this spark that people will be attracted to. But at the same time, again, sacrifice. You have to be willing to sacrifice the life that you once knew and some of the people in it. A hundred percent. And this has really been up for me lately. Um, I see so many, and I had a lot of conversations with entrepreneurs through the pandemic about this, how they're they were pandering. They don't, they didn't want to get the vaccinated they didn't believe in any of the bullshit but they were pandering to the agenda because they didn't want to lose their business they didn't want to lose their clients and I I I don't get this too much in my social media anymore but every once in a while a woke leftist will show up and comment about my fucking privilege and how I need to give my work away for free and all this fucking bullshit and I was I was before the pandemic, I would consider myself a lot more liberal than I am today. And I would use woman with an X and I was totally down with changing my language. And, um, now I'm completely not, I've, I've have, I have worked through that Mm -hmm. fucking conditioning for sure. Um, and it's just like, do you, you are a slave to this movement if you do not speak out against it and it's it's crazy how much people are not willing to sacrifice for their own freedoms for their own beliefs 
just to fit into a system. It blows my fucking mind. What is the point of being an entrepreneur if if this whole society and this whole agenda controls you? And in that control, there is no healing happening. There mm-hmm. is no life, no movement that is happening within your system because you're so fucking scared. You're a caged animal. So the two things that I know and I watch people get sucked into is a part of the language that's used in order to do that, that is security and convenience. Mm -hmm. And that is the trap. And there's no such thing as security. That's, that's a lie. Absolutely. That is, (laughs) there's no such thing. There has never been such thing, but for those who work in the same job for 40 fucking years and then retire and then don't know who they are and want to die and they've worked in a company that's 40 hours a week, the same pay, like then what? Then what do you do? You know? But I I watch people notice that some people they're like, this is all, it's all off. I have to change some things during it. And then some people were so devastated because of that job they lost or getting furloughed or getting laid off. And I think some of them now have seen it as a blessing and they know why, but while you're in it, of course you're waiting through shit and you don't know, but it's very, very hard. And they talk a lot of things, but there's no action. And that's what I had to distance myself from individuals was all the talk and no actually doing. So it's like, well, are you going to say something? Well, no. Are you going to make a move? No. So, so we're just going to keep talking about your cheating husband or (laughs) your boss is doing this or that, or, you know, or this company, but this whole, yeah, I wouldn't, for me, I don't think I ever changed the way I spoke and like would add an X or I just would stay away from bringing up things like trans and stuff like that. But um, and have zero fucking patience for anyone messaging me who is another white person talking about race when I'm like raising a black man, you know, like fuck off. You have no idea my life experience and what I've witnessed and seen and what I deal with on a daily basis and in raising a son, you Absolutely. know. So, but yeah, it was <laughs> wild to me to see always those leftist advocates that are like the fucking hall monitors on social media that are always the white woman. Yeah. And it's like this feeling, which I can never, I've never even been able to relate to. And I was, I grew up with my son's side of the family since 15. Like I grew up where it was a black family that I felt like was more like my own, you know, being there and witnessing. And still I don't have that drive to be this like, advocate or think they need me to defend them and and I did get that quite a bit and that's where I got most of that hate was was coming at me from that direction it's always white women I'm like what the hall monitors the feeling like they 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 feel to me as though they have so much shame to be a white person yeah and I'm just like listen You know, we, we incarnated exactly as we should have exactly where and the color and the lineage to learn these lessons. It was like this two lines of people in this video for this test. And it was all white people. It was like, step over to the left or step to the right. If you feel ashamed or guilty of being white, step to the left. If you don't. There was like more people stepped to the right of feeling shameful. There was two people that stayed in the middle, like they and, were in the middle. But this is the this is a huge part of the the point of like this whole leftist woke agenda. Um, and people that are pushing it. And like I used to buy into this hook, line, and sinker. And I was like, fucking shame all us white people, because we need to feel this shame you know, and shaming is never going to awaken someone. It is just a tool of the patriarchy and, and every, and colonization. And 
you know, this left woke, woke movement is just using the same tools that were used on them 500 yeah. years ago. It's insanity. It's truly fucking insane. It seems so obvious, but it's not. Yeah. You know, and, and to me, I, I just sat back the whole time. And to me, it seemed, seemed very obvious that using the same tactics and tools that exactly. were done before is like, keep them distracted, divide a nation, divide a civilization, and we'll yeah. keep on trucking. And I don't. It's fear, shame, and guilt to control yeah. people. And, and th- that is 100% what is just like eating people alive right now that shame fear and guilt yeah and the same for white men you know like it's the worst thing in the world right now to be a white man yeah 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 Yeah. I wouldn't want to have that experience right now no no but it it's a great conversation to have because of then again in our physical bodies as a woman with uterus and ovaries and breast tissue, how that stores and accumulates. You know that uh, like 99% of the time when I'm talking to someone that has had breast cancer, breast issues, nodes, anything that's shown up in the breast, not even very far right before that, a significant loss happened. And it was like of a child, either death or them moving out, it was, it was some sort of deep, deep loss of security, of nurturing, of love, or, or one they nurture or loved, you know, like breastfed, right? And it's like, it's just, it's wild to me. And it blows my mind every time because it's right in front of us of what the body is like, oh, this thing happened. We need to let it go. We need to let it go. But then our mind and our habits and our daily life is like, no, I like this. You know, Carolyn Elliott in Existential Kink, it's the eroticizing of our pain. Yeah. No, no, I like to be the martyr. Yeah. I like to be the victim. Yeah. I like this feeling I get to be fucking walking around angry all the time. Yeah. And you and I are seeing where it's storing. Yeah. And it's wild. It's wild. The addiction to our victimhood is just, it's a beast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 To foods, you know, and, and for me, I'm not one yet who has that type of discipline with certain foods. I'm not even going to lie, especially with like sugars. Um, That's huge, you know, but uh, night and day from where I've come from. Absolutely. And huge, significant, even, but just, I mean, I've been doing this work since 2012 and even just last summer, a huge healing I did with my gut, with my kidney, because it, a huge release happened in July through September with some father stuff and some deep, deep lineage stuff. And I was in it and my body was pulling it to the surface. After that, like big healing phase, I can eat some things now that used to really upset my stomach, you yeah. know, like the glutens and all that. It's just not the same anymore. I really I moved through that. When we deal with our trauma and heal our nervous system, we can digest life mm-hmm. and food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 Digesting life and food. That's a really good one. And to, to be able to stomach it. So this is what I feel like. Oh, we've kind of been in boot camp. We've been in boot camp for a long time, but like 2020 was like the, the beginning yeah. version of it. <laughs> and 2023 is going to be a like, there's going to be some moments where we're like, oh fuck, oh fuck. We're like going up, you know, the roller coaster and it's clanking and like, and so there's going to be some jolts and changes. There's like Saturn shifts, Pluto shifts for a bit, outer planets big outer planets are shifting. But I think we're being prepared for 2024 to 2026. Mm. I think the world that we know it now is not going to exist in the same way. Now we can see that as fucking terrifying or we can see it as liberating. A huge opportunity. Right. So for you, what are you being pulled into 
to um, we talked about that feeling of leveling up. What do you feel like that is and and how like the last couple of years has prepared you? And and for me, I'm specifically talking about how we are being of service because yeah. we've had to do this certain deep work on our nervous systems. We've had to learn, you know, also to the, the logical, the terminologies, the physiology. We've gone to mentors. We've invested in that, right? So for you, what do you feel like you're ready once again to dive into sort of this like known unknown, but exciting, scary at the same time? To me, it's like the leveling up is like really focusing on creating these communities and spaces for people to have experiences outside of the rat race, outside of the matrix and really prioritize that, you know, like I'm preparing to buy land to have a retreat center so that, so that me and my work and everything that I believe in is accessible so that people have women have a space to come and experience this. Um, and, and, like on a deep level, not just a drop in for a one hour fucking session. You come and you stay with me for a whole fucking week Mm -hmm. and you experience what it is to have a complete rewiring in your system so that you can go home and change your life. Right. Right. And it's the prioritizing of, of this kind of, this kind of community, deep, long-term based care and being together and at wisdom you know Mm -hmm. yeah 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 that excites the hell out of me to think about it and and land we talk about this a lot like things are happening big when it comes to the economy and they will continue to and I think for me it's always been land I don't care if there's a house on it yet I want land and a water source yep and uh It's calling a lot of people and the community too. But at the same time, I will say this, like we can't go back to the same type of hierarchical, like fucked up communal spaces that has some sort of person that thinks that they're some leader and some guru and know best. Yeah. And you see those popping up everywhere too. And there's going to be a major collapse of all that in the next few years false prophets the false gurus the communities that have almost be they become sort of this organism that is takes on a life of its own and then for me it's like you think you want to be a part of it and you go and you be around them and you realize that they're not living the life they're actually saying they are in a way of relational and especially relational because i'm not about going somewhere and people talking about divine union on social media and then you go there and everyone just having sex with each other and it's like a free love bullshit I literally have encountered that more times than I can even count yeah and it is whole union divine union polarity polyamorous movement that's happening right now is just like this immature child having its heyday right now there's yeah. no maturity. There's no groundedness. There's no truth to it. It's it's a, a just another distortion. Yeah. And I see like where in myself, I've hyper-focused on things in my past of wanting this and wanting that, and wanting this, because I wasn't content with being in the now moment within myself. I wasn't content with being alone. Totally. I wasn't content with, it was always that other. It was always that, what can I get? Or- it's same with the obsession about like the galactics. Totally. And it's, it's, it's another layer of that instant gratification. Nobody wants to put in the work to experience one person a million different ways. Yeah. That makes fucking work. They all want to experience a million different people because that's easy as fucking pie, you know? Mm-hmm. Instant gratification is, and it's just continual dopamine hit after dopamine hit is one of the like worst addictions that our world has right now. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's the cage with, it's the cage that has the door open 
and we pretend yeah. like the door isn't open to exit it and yeah. we keep going back and forth into it it's, and it's the same thing with the the white women who are you know just virtue signaling you are getting a dopamine hit from your virtue yeah. signaling rather than digging deep and doing the fucking work around your ancestry yeah you know and feeling the uncomfortable feelings and and <laughs> going down into it yeah what is a big story that you feel like you're ending for the lineage of women in your life, a belief they've been carrying? I definitely feel like I'm, I'm working well, multiple, multiple for sure. Um, one of the biggest ones that is up right now is this story that menstruation always needs to be painful. That has been a story that has been running through my matrilineal line for many, many years. Um, so I'm I'm not through that one yet, but and ending that one in my lifetime. Um, but I definitely feel like the the sexual shame and the stories of distortion that I've, that has been passed down. I've, I feel like that's been eradicated mm -hmm. in me and will not be passed down at all. Um, and this story that, you know, that I've been thinking about this. It's my mom's birthday on January 10th. And the story that women are just fucking crazy that we don't have anything fucking important to say and like this is a story that is I can see it play out from my great grammar to my grandma to my mom and it's something that has held me back from tapping into my full potential for sure because and that's why I've I've I I'm so grateful for my knowledge of anatomy and how much I dedicated to myself to that but it's been a safety blanket because I can always go back to, oh, here's the science, mm -hmm. you know, instead of fully trusting in the magic that I hold. And it's time to bust through that bullshit story that, oh, anything I say, if it's not proven by science is just fucking bullshit and crazy. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I've been thinking about a lot about the the painful menstruation and um my mom had a hysterectomy I believe when she was 25 years old right after she had me because her periods were so heavy and so painful and she was just like fuck it having a hysterectomy and like my periods are extremely painful even with all the fucking work I do mm. and it's it's this one piece that I haven't been able to figure out in all the different avenues that I've taken from it. And it's, I'm starting to, yeah, just look at different, different layers of, of, of it, I guess. Yeah. I thought I, I thought I addressed all of them, but not the case. <laughs> I love it that you just said that, like, as we're starting to end the conversation, because my missing piece is like, female ejaculation and the complete full surrender that you have stepped into that you have obtained that you have done and for me I have feel the ecstatic non-painful menstruation so it's like there's a really beautiful mirror we have together of coming and what we have addressed and what we haven't and how we can assist each other. And that's, I think that's how co-creation and, and that's how we align works. You know, yeah. it's like, it's those polarities. Totally. Those parts of our, ourself. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's a humbling part of the path of being human that healing is not an end goal. It's not about coming to a place of perfection. It's never right. ending. It's, onion layer after onion layer after onion layer and mm -hmm. being able to accept that and just surrender to that is just so fucking important 
And being able to have a joyful, fulfilling life where we are not obsessed with healing and the healing process. Yeah. It is going to come when it's going to come. Yeah. The trick yeah. will tell you that there's something there, the things will happen, there will be the excavation on its own. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, let it happen and yeah. go about all the other things that give you joy. Yeah. And don't hate your body because it's not happening on your timeline. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, being 37 and not being in the type of relationship I wanted or have desired and really unconsciously feared. It's, it's, yeah, it took me a minute. I was like, are you fucking serious? This is what we're doing here. But now I understand. Now I understand why. And I am now seasoned enough to sustain the type of relationship that will always bring more and more stuff up when you have it. Um, Yeah, the same with people who don't have kids until later in life. That's brilliant if that's the case. Yeah. The seasoning and the experiences that you had to have in order to meet the soul coming through that veil. And um, I'm not an advocate either for IVF and, and all of those things as well, because I think that if that's what's meant to happen in this life and a soul is going to come through and our body opens, like I, I've worked with people who, I mean, this is like 90% of the time too. You uh, try for so long, have rounds of IVF, nothing happens. You adopt a child <laughs> or you get pregnant. <laughs> you get pregnant every time. The resistance is gone. There's no more of that, like feeling something's wrong with you. There's a missing piece. There's some, you know, and there's now this, this life and this creation that is keeping you distracted from the bullshit stories. Yeah, because that's all that it is. It's the stories that we're carrying. So, all right, share what you have coming up, what you're doing right now, and then um, where people can find you. Best place for people to find me is Instagram. Um, Carly Ray Boji is my Instagram, and my my biggest focus right now for working with women is in my year-long container flesh and blood um I'm I'm almost at a point where I'm like I don't know if I want to keep teaching nectar because it's feeding that instant gratification dopamine hit you know like I want women who want to spend time could you could my flesh and blood container is a year-long commitment and I want mm-hmm. who are ready to go deep yeah. and spend the time with their bodies and excavate and get to know their system and dive into the deepest, darkest nooks and crannies within their tissue and see what's there. Um, yeah. 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 And then uh, just excited to talk about doing more in-person and yes. for you and for me and then together, you know, in Canada. Yeah in um the early summer so yeah we'll talk more about that and something online that we'll do as sort of like an introduction probably early March and well I just want you to know that yeah I'm really grateful for our paths aligning in this life again it makes so much sense why on so (laughs) many levels um and then doing things in person and watching the women that come forth to do that that are ready to step forward and I think that people that, you know, we're aligning with anyway, uh, the women are healing a very, very long line of stories and patterns. It is not the easy work. um, And it is for the brave ones. It is for the Joan of Arc women. And that's what I'm here for. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, if you're listening to this, it is possible to heal yourself it's possible to hear heal your physical body without drugging yourself without cutting yourself open and listening to that voice that isn't external that is coming from within like we're talking about that leads us to the big leaps and jumps and it is fucking terrifying but there are those out there like us who are here to assist yeah and their support so we are meant to experience this life feeling well 
and feeling nourished. Absolutely. And it takes guidance and support, someone walking beside you along the way. And holding you accountable for your shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> holding you when you need it, rocking you, watching you ugly cry and snot, and then telling you, come on, let's get it fucking together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Carly. Thanks, love.